And it's my pleasure to introduce Yossi Vardi. Mr. Vardi is one of Israel's top entrepreneurs. He has funded or developed more than 70 clean tech, energy, or natural resource companies, created the Instant Messenger ICQ, and served as an advisor to the CEOs of Amazon, AOL, World Bank, and more. Mr. Vardi is talking today about what is social entrepreneurship. Please welcome Mr. Vardi to the stage. Good, good afternoon. I'm really pleased to be here and to see the interest that uh, the topic is uh, raising. It's the fourth day and it's really, I guess, give all of us a good feeling that, that so many people are interested in the topic. One correction, I didn't create ICQ. I happened to fund the four Israeli guys who created it. I didn't have any idea what they were uh, doing, and this is a continuous theme in all my investments. I don't know what the guys are doing, but sometimes I'm lucky. <laughs> I would like, uh, in, the, in the short time I have, I would like to, to talk on the major difference between social and entrepreneurship and regular for-profit entrepreneurship, though we have to agree that uh, for-profit can also be a, a social uh, entrepreneurship, uh, you call it in this country, I think, doing well by doing good. But uh, the, main, the main difference is a very interesting one. About a year ago, I attended a wedding in Silicon Valley, and I was uh, sitting in the very nice uh, wedding, and I was sitting at the wedding next to a very interesting gentleman. I asked him, who are you? He said, I'm Dean Onish. I asked him, what are you doing? He said, I'm the Dean of the San Francisco Medical School. I asked him, uh, what is your medical area? And he said, I am dealing with happiness. I told him, that's interesting. Can you elaborate? I heard you know about uh, kidney doctors, heart doctors, brain doctors, but happiness doctors I never heard about, and he told me there is a very, very big body of research which shows that well-being affects your immune system. If, you, if your well-being is good, your immune system functions much better, and, you, and your health is much better. So he said, instead of subscribing pills and drugs to my patients, I wanted to subscribe to them happiness, improve their well-being, and that way they will consume less drugs. I say that's, uh, it, it, the, the conversation really began to be interesting. Because I knew you go and you are doing, uh, you invest uh, you in entrepreneurs, so you are an entrepreneur, and usually the criteria is, uh, do you have a good return? on the investment, what is the market cap, etc. I can tell you from experience that good market cap also improve your well-being, but in a different way. <laughs> but uh, I asked him, okay, so how you subscribe happiness? He told me there are many ways to subscribe happiness, but there is one way which is accessible to everybody. It's readily available. It's not expensive. Everybody can do it. It's very democratic, and it gives a very good feeling to the people. And I asked him what it is. He said, find somebody who needs help and go and help him for no ulterior motive. And when you help him, you will see that he is happy, that he is grateful. It will give you a good feeling about yourself. And this is what I subscribe to my patient. So, so the, this, this idea that the dividend of social entrepreneurship is measured in happiness kind of plugged into my, my head and I try to, to think about it and to try to see my experience from my, my uh, activities which are not for uh, profit and then I discovered the following. When you are doing for-profit entrepreneurship you are Having, if you lose, then it's okay. You lose the money, you don't have any issues. I'm not sure how it affects your well-being, but it's over. When you make a profit, you have a problem how you turn this profit <coughs> into joy. You have to, to, to take the, the, the dividends or the, the, the 
proceeds from the exit, turn it to something meaningful to Joy, and this is a big headache. You have to manage the money, the banks are falling apart, you don't uh, sleep at night because some European bank is about to shake out where your money is. Lot of worrying. You have to deal with uh, your friends' uh, investors, you have to deal with the, the entrepreneurs, you have to deal with workers, we have to deal with customers. Very complex. When you are going and doing a non-profit and the non-profit succeed, you immediately harvest the dividend in the best form of currency, and this is the form of joy. You, you do something good, it gives you a very good feeling about yourself. You go to the mirror, you look at the mirror, you say, what a wonderful person I am. You are full of appreciation to yourself. Your, your well-being is, is going up. You consume according to the only less drugs. And, uh, and this is the major, the major difference between, from the personal point of view, between for-profit and non-profit. Non-profit gives you much higher reward. The interesting thing is that for people who don't experience it, it looks like a big mystery. You don't, until you experience it, you cannot, you cannot understand the, the joy you get, and the, the joy you get is actually, as you know, happiness is expressed, or satisfaction is expressed in the brain in terms of dopamine and some other chemicals which are very addictive. So when you begin to do it, you get quite uh, addictive. So that's the main, the main difference, and I would uh, use uh, Dean Ornish's suggestion and try to recommend it to anybody. Try social entrepreneurship, but be, I don't think you are doing favor to anybody, I think you are doing favor for yourself. I don't think it's altruistic, I think it's very egotistic, because you do it for the joy of, which I just described. Be careful of one thing, it may become very addictive. Thank you very much.